Well, let's go ahead and get going. How's everybody doing? Good. Enjoying your time so far? Yeah. Cool. Well, my, my name's Sean. I'm the creative arts pastor slash music pastor at Bethany Christian Assembly in Everett. And uh, this is Kyla. She works with me directly. She is um, really in charge of developing musicians and artists for our church. So um, we're a church of a couple thousand people, and music is a big part of what we do from children to adults. And having that pathway of people, that that pipeline of musicians, does anybody have a church where you're like looking for a drummer, looking for a musician? It's like the constant problem in church is finding people to serve and be involved. So what we want to talk about today is creating a culture of worship. <clears throat> and the, the tagline here is, do I really have to pay people to use their gifts for Jesus? When you're when you're desperate for musicians, a lot of churches today, they're actually hiring people to come. Do you guys, does anybody here hire people to play music in their church? Nobody? Yes, some people do. Uh, we do. We have found ourselves needing to hire people because the, the level of musicianship is, is high. And so we want to keep that high level. Um, and we have just spent the last couple of years trying to develop a different way of creating a new culture for worship. So people will actually want to use their gifts for Jesus. They want to use it in the church and don't have this expectation that they're going to get paid. Um, there are still times that we have to do that for special services or something. But uh, the things we want to talk about today, the elements of worship, what does that look like? What are the things that go into a worship service? Um, who are the people? How do you get people? Um, what's the kind of music that you use? Um, does that fit in your culture? How can you maybe go to the next level with your worship? Um, leadership, how do you raise up leaders and have that pipeline of people that are coming through your church? And then how does this all apply to kids' ministry? Um, show of hands, how many of you guys, I would say, are in kids' ministry? I think everybody's in kids' ministry. Um, are like the kids' pastor? Okay, awesome. Pretty cool. And uh, so we want to help you. Uh, th this is fairly new to us, but we've been doing things like VBS and all those things where we're trying to get children involved in worship at a really young age because your our children today are going to be our youth leaders in a season and then they're going to be our worship leaders in a couple seasons so uh, it's really important that we invest in kids young and identify talent at, at a young age so we want hopefully you'll go away from here feeling like yeah we can there's some things we can tweak and start uh, recruiting kids at a really young age and we really want our conversation to be interactive so if we're just talking that's going to be really boring, and it's going to get annoying because my voice is kind of high-pitched, and it's just hard to listen to. <laughs> Aren't we our own worst critic? Like, you don't like to hear yourself talk. You hear a recording of yourself. You're like, man, do I really sound like that? How can you stand me? But anyway, <laughs> so please, ask questions. We're going to ask you a bunch of questions, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in to our, uh, our session. Um, what elements are involved in worship? This is really basic stuff. So obviously there's music, there's piano, drums, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, keyboard players, electric piano, different type of type piano. You notice we had two pianos on stage today. They're doing completely different things. Um, a bass guitar, lead singers, part singers, visual worshipers. Uh, have you ever seen people that are just visually on stage? I think Elevation is doing that right now. Uh, Bethel has people on stage right now where they're actually not singing, they're actually dancing. And if you saw me do that, you would not go to my church. <laughs> but there are, there are visual worshipers. And I think some things like Bethel, some of the stuff they do is, is beautiful. You know, we, we um, kind of explored some different arts this last Christmas where we had people doing painting and poetry. And it's just, it can be really, really, really beautiful um, to I involve those other arts. Now, you know, I grew up in the AG and dancing and things like that were like, you were not going to see Jesus someday if you danced in church. <laughs> um, but there, there is a different movement, and I think there's a season where some of those things can be used and, and be really, really enhanced. But I know in some of our churches that's a cultural thing, and so you just have to kind of balance those things and uh, use it where you can. Uh, sound is obviously a huge, huge part of, of worship. Uh, visual arts. How many of you guys use uh, maybe cameras in your worship service like you have stuff up on the screen with the okay how many of you guys use powerpoint so you, you've got lyrics up on your screen does anybody not use the lyrics up on the screen 
Do you guys remember that overhead projector? <laughs> Is anybody been around? Am I really aging myself right now? I mean, honestly, it hasn't been that long ago where we were taken, and if the words were wrong on the slide, you'd like cross it out and write the right word. <laughs> I mean, we've come a long way, baby. This is, uh, so having words up on the screen, but now visual arts can also be like uh, motion graphics where you've got colors and things going on. Some really beautiful things right now with visual arts is you've got the lyrics up there, but you've also got like nature. Bethel's really great with just using nature scenes. And we've got a guy, uh, Denver, from our church who he will use his drone and he'll fly over the trees in Western Washington, fly up on streams and just make that stuff yourself. Again, now you're using somebody else's gift. YouTube. YouTube, yeah, you can steal a lot from YouTube. Just beautiful scenescapes where, uh, in fact, I just saw a video, uh, I think it was Elevation again, where, no, it was Leland. Leland was, was singing Lion and the Lamb, and behind him was this video wall, and it was this beautiful waterfall behind him. I'm like, that's pretty awesome. But I'm a visual guy. Most guys are visual, so I would kind of get lost in the scenery and forget that I'm worshiping, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, atmospherics. Did you guys notice in the room this morning or last night that there was a little bit of a, a haze in the air? Has anybody used haze in their church? Yeah, exactly. You know, hey, you know, atmospherics can be really, really controversial. Like we're we're a pretty good sized church, and I love haze because it makes your lights pop. Like you can see the streams of light. I love that. Um, but our church, we have a few people that are sensitive sensitive to the smoke and it's going to be harmful to them i mean we've done our research we know it's not harmful um, i love the theater so i love all that stuff and i can debate it with people for a long time um, it does enhance but for me if it if it's distracting someone it's just not worth the battle you know you've probably heard the phrase that's not a hill i'm willing to die on okay some battles i will fight that's not a, a battle i think it's cool and i love visual parts of worship but again in your church you'll just have to decide what hills you're willing to die on um, staging I love staging how many of you guys use um, some type of props on your stage right now okay so what churches are you guys from I'm just curious how about here KCA in Kelso. in Kelso okay very cool how about here Valley Assembly, oh beautiful how about back here City Point Church, Mount Vernon. nice I know you guys uh, we're in Everett, so I know you guys actually very well. And what church are you from? Nettle. What is it? From Nettle. Okay, sweet. Where's that at? On Moses Lake. On Moses Lake. Awesome. Eastern Washington represented right here. Anybody else? Are there churches? Life Center. Life Center Tacoma? Beautiful. Awesome. How about you? Uh, Life Church Bayside in Bellingham. Yeah, that's awesome. How about in the back? Uh, Medical Lake. Medical Lake, Far East, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, Design props. So raise your hands again. How many of you guys use props on your stage? Okay. And do you put lights onto those props? There you go. So that that technology, you see that on the in the big churches um, where they've got beautiful video walls and things like this that cost tens of thousands of dollars. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of white white uh, wood. You know, and then you shine lights onto that, LEDs, and LEDs are dirt cheap right now. You can get LEDs for like 50 bucks. We just planted a church in Marysville, and we did a whole lighting system with props for like 500 bucks. And, you know, they have to set it up every week, so it has to be pretty mobile. But amazing what you can do. Uh, there's a great website you could go to. It's called churchstagedesign.com. Um, we've built some sets, and they've gone on that website. Great ideas for you to uh, build some things in your church to just kind of get the, the brown wall with the cross and make it a little bit more uh, interactive, make it a little bit more engaging. And that's just a fun fun thing. And then lastly, systems. Plan how many of you guys use Planning Center? Have you have any, never heard of Planning Center before? So everybody knows what Planning Center is. Our, church is. our church uses Planning Center for every ministry. Yeah. Kids, greeters, uh, music, obviously, in the in the older congregation, in the younger congregation, all the way down. We use Planning Center, um, Song Select. That's where we get our music. CCLI, obviously, there's licenses and stuff that go in with that. But um, this is all just basic music stuff. Let's dive into um, the People product, and this is uh, this is Kyla. Like I mentioned, Kyla handles all of our recruiting identifying musicians early, and this is a huge part of what we want you to come away with today. Um, 
none of this stuff is original to us. We've, we've stolen it from other churches who are doing it well. And uh, identifying talent and recruiting people is a big part of your success in worship. So Kyla Hedge, take it away. Yeah, well, the question at the top, and I think what we always think about is how do we recruit? How do we convince people to do us a lot of favors for free? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much is what we're doing. Uh, work for me for nothing. <laughs> and... Um, well, for the Lord, but mm. you know, <laughs> for no money. Way to be spiritual. Bring and, it back around. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think, one, I just always live by the motto of I'm just always recruiting. Mm-hmm. I'm just always in that mentality. And um, my dad's actually a music pastor, and that's really how he functions. So I've just watched it my whole life, and it really works. So I thought, okay, well, if this works, I guess I'll give it a shot. And uh, so all the time in conversation, um, I'm thinking about it, and if I, like, just get to know people more, um, usually in conversation, eventually it will come up, like, something random, like, my son plays the drums, or, oh, yeah, I used to play guitar, like, three years ago when we were at such and such church, or we, you know what I mean, and then I'm like, aha, you were just hiding, (laughs) and so, because a lot of people don't really come forward sometimes, um, Actually, especially adults, kids are a little bit more excited, so they come, but the adults are probably harder to get um, to do that. They'll do everything to get their kids involved, mm-hmm. but not necessarily themselves. Um, so I guess, yes, first just living in a mentality of recruiting. I'm always looking, I'm always listening, I'm always aware. Um, but I think the biggest way that we have recruited is through our team members themselves recruiting and then personal invitations. So um, everybody that's on our worship team, you know, whatever position they play, whether it's the guitar or they're the sound person or they're whatever, you know, a lot of times they will bring friends and just say like, hey, my friend plays the drums and he really wants to talk to you, you know, about getting involved. So they are like our first force of recruiters. So the more you can ingrain into people just the culture of recruiting that we always want to include more people you know and I just always tell them um, I don't want a ton of people because they want our whole like church to be on the platform I'm not trying to get everyone to be on the worship team or everyone to run sound but I think it's important to have everybody actively serving in the church because it keeps you connected to the church and that keeps you connected to Christ Mm -hmm. and so uh, that's why recruiting is important to me not to grow our team for the sake of growth but for the sake of um, keeping them connected to just the church and God in general. So the first is definitely then. The second is personal invitation, either from them or myself or Sean. Um, Like I said, if I'm always listening and actively hearing about people, then I'll just go right up and talk to them. The worst thing they can say is no. Right. But in the like at the end of it, if they do, I didn't lose anything because yeah. they weren't there anyway in the first place. So right. I think it's just a big thing, and I think we put it on here like just don't be scared to hear no. It's not a big deal. Um, if they say no, great. Well then, um, you just move on and ask somebody else. Or if you're like me, you just think, oh that's nice. They just don't know yet, but they'll be on my team someday. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's like sales one of It's like, it's not really a no. It's, it's not a, really. It's a true. not now. Yes. They think it's a no, but I know it's a not now. So um, that's like a really, really big thing. Um, One thing we've done recently too, and it actually worked really well, but I think it kind of depends on seasons and churches to put up some sort of announcement. Um, I think this last time we gained more than we have in the past because we were specific Mm -hmm. with our need. Um, If you just say you need worship people, what usually happens is you get like 50 singers. And, like, singers are really important. You can't just have all guitar players. That would be weird. Mm -hmm. But you can't also just have no instruments and no sound people and no media people and all singers. So we chose to make a video and list specific needs that we had at the time. So we needed graphics people. We need sound people. We needed um, guitar players and drummers. And those were some of the key ones. And so our connection cards that we have that people filled out reflected that. And that's, like, who responded. So we ended up getting a good chunk of really qualified people through that. But I think the key to that one um, was not because we did an advertisement, was because we uh, showed the specific need in that. But again, I always think that personal invitation will get you farther um, because one, it shows that you care, and two, if they've been um, invited by you and they show up, we were just talking about this before this, then they know somebody, Mm -hmm. so they feel more welcome, they feel more excited to be there than if they're just entering this team of people that's like kind of scary, you know, you've never met them. Um, Oh yeah, (laughs) the last one we were laughing about. The attractive. The attractive. 
Um, <laughs> not as a person, <laughs> but um, just as a ministry. You know, if you're an uh, if you're an environment that's inviting, you're a group of people who are welcoming and fun, and you don't attack people when they walk in the door, but you yeah. greet them, make them feel included, and also you're producing a good product. Yeah. You know, we want to do our best, not because we're trying to become the next Hillsong or Bethel, but because we want to do the best with the gifts that God's given us. Absolutely. And if we're doing that, um, then we would be some we would be a group that's attractive for people to join and they would be uh, it'd be more self-recruiting then people just start to come because it's a cool environment to be a part of they feel welcome they feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves um so then we talk about uh recruiting who do you recruit um i think something i've been really realizing recently is you don't need to recruit people who have it all together as far as what they're doing. You don't need to recruit excellence. Now, if somebody is excellent and walks in your door, don't spit in their face. Yeah. <laughs> Hug them. Like, you know what I mean? Welcome them. But you just really need people who are willing to achieve excellence and people who fit your church's culture and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and then to enable uh, us to kind of decipher, like, um, is this person somebody who fits in our culture? Can can we grow them into you know being a part of our team? We have a system that we use, and we borrowed it from another church. It's just a yes, no, or grow. So I might find somebody and think, awesome, this person plays guitar. I really want to kind of you know hear are they musically qualified? Talk to them. Are they spiritually qualified? Are they qualified leadership wise? If that's you know if everybody on the team is viewed as a leader, so just get to know them, and then in that meeting we kind of have that yes, no, or grow. I think we all understand what yes and no means, so I want to focus more on the grow side of it. So uh, we've had a lot of students, especially we've started a ministry college kind of recently. We partner with Northwest, and so a lot of those students come, and they are great at their instruments, but let's say they're a drummer who's good, but they've never played with a click. But we use a click, so you can't necessarily just dive right in and have no idea how to stay with the metronome the whole time. So in that case, they would be considered a grow. Um, so what we do in our church is we partner with them, with what we call coaches, um, to prepare them for the opportunity to be on the team. Um, so kind of that pathway of progress that the coaches lead is like this. So first, I guess the answer is like what is a coach who is a coach how do you find coaches let alone because you're trying to find the drummer so now how are you finding the drum coach you know if you don't even have one person um to us um everybody that's with us here on the worship team this weekend um functions as coaches at our church actually and we identified them because they are people who um are musically qualified to train people but they're also um, strong spiritual leaders mm -hmm. in the church and so it's really more than just teaching somebody how to be the better drummer and play with the click it's also teaching them how to be a leader on the team mm -hmm. and uh, how they can contribute that way so what that coach does then is I say hey so and so we have this new drummer you know they're really wanting to be on the team I think they're awesome they'll be a good fit but they're struggling you know, to play with the click, can you work with them? And then my job at that point is I pass it off to the appropriate coach. That coach takes them and works with them. And then um, after that point, my job is just to connect with the coach and kind of follow their progress. I find myself just asking them, hey, how is Joe doing, you know, learning to play with the click? Is it, give me a gauge. Do you think it's like six months from now? he's going to be good. Do you think he could play tomorrow? Do you think it's a year from now? And so we just continue that conversation um, until that person's ready to be a part of the team. And it really enables us to involve a lot more people because if Sean and I were the only people coaching and recruiting, um, that would take forever. And you also don't want me teaching you to drum. <laughs> so um, it's good to have other people <clears throat> helps our team grow quicker. Um, I think the other thing about coaches too and their job is as they're coaching somebody, the goal would be that that coach would be training them to be a team member but also to be a coach. And if that coach is really doing their job, then what happens is that new student or adult or whatever comes out of that process and then they in turn begin to coach. Um, and so we really have different layers even of coaches at our church. We have coaches who are here who coach our adults, but then we have youth who coach our younger youth and our children. Um, and you know, eventually as your church progresses, then you could even have 
sixth graders coaching your third graders and then the process just goes all the way down or all the way up to your senior citizens in the church Um, because we all know worship goes throughout all generations Um, in our church we have services that literally span um, from kids to a traditional service so really just creating that pipeline and I think it just really um, it creates a culture of service that way then if your coaches are training coaches Mm -hmm. and it really um shows your young ones especially what it means to serve in the church and what it means to give back you know we're all kind of here to to grow and then the next step in our continuing to grow when some things i talk to our students about is to teach others that really helps you grow yourself um and then for our on ramp when we have a coach what they do is they work with the person and then that person comes to a rehearsal and they watch the team members and what they do and then they um will do it with them so we might double so we have two electric players now if it's a drummer it's a little more complicated we just have to be creative maybe we do an extra practice or something um and then it flips and then they actually do it and our coaches um are there to be encouragers to them and provide um constructive feedback if necessary in that moment but again it really just boils down to um how you recruit, you find people, you provide opportunity, we pair them with coaches, and in turn that helps kind of cultivate that whole pipeline throughout our church in hopes that you don't have to pay people to come because you always have a consistent stream of people flowing through your church. So what are your guys' challenges when it comes to recruiting? I mean, so we've got a, a great group of smaller churches, larger churches. What is your challenge with recruiting people and finding the people that are helping do worship for you? I think our challenge is is our church has been through a lot of uh, a couple of splits Mm. a lot of pain Mm. and uh, ministry failures Mm. and it's taken some time to uh, bring it out of that so people associate children's ministry with uh, I've got to babysit Mm. and they, you know, they're stuck just starting to recognize that it's not like that, mm-hmm. but uh, recruiting through that mentality has been really hard. Absolutely. And I think with kids, a lot of people older, they have the mentality, they just sing Jesus Loves Me, hmm. or they just sing the little cute church songs that we all learned at church camp, whereas we're not. We're perfect. We're teaching our kids how to worship God. Yeah. yeah. We're not teaching them how to do a motion to a fun song just so they can dance. Mm-hmm. We are teaching kids what it means to worship God. And I think sometimes it's hard to have people know that in, in the church, no matter what church you go to. I think it's hard. We just moved we're three months into this position that we're in now. Mm-hmm. And that's what we, you know, these kids didn't know what it meant to raise their hands yeah. to worship. Yeah. You know, and. That's hard, and so sometimes we just tell people, hey, come watch a kid's service. There you go. Come yeah. watch it. Right. Come see what we do. Yep. You know, we're going to jump around and have some yeah. time, but we're also going to teach them what it means. Yep. Anything else? Big challenges. I mean, obviously, uh, man, if, if church were perfect, we, we probably wouldn't, we wouldn't have needed Jesus, obviously. Uh, when, you're, when you're faced with, with staff pain, with leadership pain, I mean, really, ministry uh, succeeds and falls with leadership, right? So if you're a church that is engaged with worship from children to adults, it's because you've got someone who's leading that. That's really strong at teaching people. They don't have to necessarily stand behind a PowerPoint and teach worship. You, you just need the right person that's engaging people and not just singing songs. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. but singing songs is not worship having a person that can sing is not worship it's or, or worship leading it's really someone who is so our church has experienced a lot of great growth and a lot of that is brand new believers and with a church that's gone through a, some tough transitions when you're growing a lot of times sometimes it's transfer growth what you really pray for is new salvation growth and now we're teaching uh, adults how to worship, and that's a completely foreign thing to them, right? So we're, we're not only teaching them, hey, we're singing, this is not just karaoke, we're teaching them 
who we're singing to, why we're singing, what that looks like, and having the right team. That's why this, this pathway of progress is so important because we want to have our adults training our youth and you have to have the right adults to do that, right? Then you have to have your youth and they have to be the right youth to train your kids. Yeah. And identifying those, um, those students really young is where you come in. Because what you're doing is the future of worship in the church. And uh, so it's a really cool opportunity. And kids today, they can learn any instrument in days oh, yeah. from YouTube. I mean, I'm too old to do that now. I mean, I'm like, someday I'm going to lead from the guitar and it's going to be mediocre. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to sit behind YouTube and teach myself. I probably do. I just don't. But students, they, and they, they can learn anything off of YouTube. So if you can, as leaders, if you can identify who those students are and encourage that behavior, because they could be spending their time on a hundred different things, um, and invest in those kids, huge opportunity. Um, we've got two children, I think they're sixth graders, mm, yeah, I think so. fifth or sixth graders, they're going to be leading our next worship set with us today. Okay, so they're going to open it up. So make sure you scream loud for them and cheer them on. Because they were people that, so the team that's on the stage with us this weekend, they were the ones that were leading in, in True 56, our fifth and sixth graders. And these students were identified as future leaders in the church. So I'm, I'm getting chills right now because it's, it's, it, it works. And you want to encourage that behavior and encourage these kids. So they're going to be here today. Not so, uh, well, we want them exposed to what it looks like and what the future could be for them in the church. The church is the greatest place for people to learn music and to lead with a purpose behind that, not for making our name great, but for making his name great. So um, the next thing we want to talk about is the music product. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this, but it is important because our cultures are completely different as churches. Uh, you know, not every church is like BCA, where we have a contemporary worship service that is probably 70% uh, of our congregation. We actually have a separate venue for our uh, more traditional, and that happens simultaneously with our service. So we use video, but that other congregation has their own worship, and it's very traditional. Um, they're, they're doing 15 songs on a Sunday, but they're spending like 30 seconds on a song. Because it's like, we sing this chorus into this chorus, and it's a medley, and it's beautiful, and the piano guy's doing his thing. It's, it's remarkable. Um, it's way different from us, but that's the target audience. So here's, the, here's one thing. You guys remember Mars Hill Church? Yeah. Um, I worked really closely with Mars Hill Church. And one thing that that church did really well is they identified who their target audience was. So before they even went into a community, they knew who they were, re who they were trying to reach, how they were going to reach them, and then they built their teams to reach those people. Really, really smart business strategy. So you as children's leaders, if you can think through that, okay, who is my target? Who are the kids in your neighborhood, in the area that you're reaching, and what are those kids looking for? Are they, are they Bieber fans, or are they still Nickelodeon fans? Uh, you, you can identify what those kids are, and then use the right tools to reach those kids. Okay, so like Hillsong, we're going to talk a little bit about that. There are churches that are doing some really cool stuff that you can just steal, borrow, use in Jesus' name, whatever you're going to call uh, and, and use those materials to reach the kids using the right resources. So know your target audience. How do you balance a multicultural congregation? How many of you guys have different services for different styles of music? Life Center, you guys do? Uh, so you have like a contemporary service. How many of you guys have one service? Okay, so you've got to fit reaching a, a couple different generations. So you've got the older folks saying, why don't we sing hymns? And you've got the younger saying, I don't want to go to that church because all they do is sing hymns. You got, you've got to find a balance. And that's really, really challenging. But there are ways to do that. And some of the, the uh, churches today, they're doing a really cool job of mixing it up. You know, we're going to sing a hymn. Is it today or tomorrow? It might be tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, contemporizing him, so you're reaching both audiences. There's just ways to do that. Um, for me, when we're choosing songs, we sit down as a team, and we will choose uh, a set of songs, 40 songs that we're going to use in a season, and those songs have to, a few, have to fit a few cri criteria. Are they easy to learn? Do they have what we call a familiar hook? So can they be sung 
really learned quickly and it just sticks those songs that just stick in your head are they radio songs i'm sorry to say it but we are a spirit 1053 church in some some degrees we're a bethel song we're a hill Beth, a hill song church we're a bethel church we're a lot of different things because but we're picking songs that fit our culture yeah. right and so we know what our congregation's hungry for and what they respond to so learn those things now i know i'm talking to to children's people, not worship people. So I want to make sure I'm hitting the mark with you um, and not just talking just about worship. Um, for children, this does apply to you. Are your songs interactive? We talked about, do you have the hand motions? Do they have the shouts and all those things? Um, you got to pick the songs that engage kids where they are, yeah. right? So if you have one kid service and you've got a big range of kids, you're going to have some kids that are too cool for school and they're not going to engage. And then you get the little kids that are like, I'm going to go potty in my pants right now. <laughs> you, you got all those things to deal with. Um, reach your kids where they are. Do what you can. Pick songs. You know, find artists. Hillsong, Bethel, they all have great kid stuff out there. Use it. Use it. Buy it. Pay for it. Um, we do. And you just got to you gotta do what you got to do to reach those kids. Um, kids love lights. They love media. They love those atmospheric elements. And again, you can buy cool karaoke style lights that are really, really cheap, find a local DJ store and they'll hook you up for, you know, a hundred bucks. You can find some really cool stuff. Um, I'm not really sure why this is on this slide, but it does happen before worship. No one should be leading publicly when they, what they don't practice privately. Okay, so when you're raising up people to lead even in kids, you don't want someone proclaiming that we need to be worshiping Jesus if they don't do that privately. Because it, it manifests itself really quickly. You can tell when someone's fairly shallow and they're just singing versus someone who practices it. It may not be evident at first, but I think longevity in the church is really, that's been proven time and time again. People that flame out quickly, they don't have, uh, you may have heard, uh, still waters run deep. Okay, People that are flashy and they do all that stuff, so oftentimes they're very shallow. But when there's, when there's depth, that's when you've, you've got longevity in the church. So, um, a few. I, I just want to make sure that we're hitting the mark before we before we run out of time. We've got some things on who is leading. Do they sing? What does leading look like? Um, the band, the box, which means you got 20 minutes to fill, fill it well, do it well. Recruiting. What would you like to uh, us to hit uh, before before our time's done? What are some of your questions? You came in here expecting something. So what would you like us to, to hit? Because we can keep rolling through this. I guess something that we always struggle with is that we're trying to incorporate, like, not like super like powerful slow songs, but we're trying to incorporate more songs that where they could just sit there and just experience the song. Hmm. But, I mean, a lot of times we struggle, you know, with the kids wanting to, like, sit down, like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, yeah. the song is so slow. Yeah. What are we even listening to right now? So, like... I think something that we're struggling with, especially in kids' classrooms, is trying to, like our elementary school classroom, you know, we're trying to get them to engage more with, like, not just doing the motions just because, oh, cool, we're dancing, but to actually hear the song and hear what it's about. So it's like, how do you think, what do you think would be a good, like, intro into moving from, you know, dance music and doing all that to kind of like a slower kind of set, or just one song at least, like, that they can just sit there and, like, worship? Yeah. Now, I have a thought. You have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, you can go first if you want. Okay, my thought is make sure that you got people that those kids look up to, yeah. Yeah. right? Because if they're if you've got somebody that like J Johnny is the coolest cat, he's got his hat kind of slightly off. It's a flat bill. It's not the rounded baseball thing, whatever your style is. But he's a cool, like this hat right here. This guy's cool. I can tell. He's got the flat bill. See right there. You go. <laughs> J Johnny's cool, and he's in that room, and he's like, man, wasn't that fun? We're praising God. We're pumping our fists. Let me tell you about this next song which talks about not this, but more like this. And so you got leadership that kids are looking up to. Just those, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn out yeah. you know, yeah. message, but it's just like, hey man, this song, this is what it matters, means to me. Yeah. And it's hard with kids because they haven't seen the struggles that we have seen. Yeah. They don't understand church mm -hmm. hardships and you don't understand the pain I came in, in with this morning. Can I just, you know, it's like the kid becomes the counselor. <laughs> it's like, will you just listen to me for a minute? Because uh, I've got pain. Um, we just need to take those small moments and speak into the life of the kid and use people who've walked that and can speak into their life and be an example. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
I'll say too, uh, so we recently split our youth service that I get to be a part of into fifth through eighth and then high school college. So the past couple weeks I've been able to be upstairs with the younger ones. And I know up to eighth grade is a little older than your kids, but not necessarily the fifth graders. Um, and so something that I noticed leading up there um, was one, having leaders that they look up to was huge. So it makes them think jumping around is even more fun too mm-hmm. when like someone's over here is just going bonkers, like yeah. running around. Like we're doing songs like we are running and everybody's running around the whole room. Like it's just chaos. Everyone's just going nuts. But they think it's so fun, you know what I mean, first of all. And then when we ran it into talk about something a little more serious, two things really help. Um, one, um, explaining the song in really simple terms because the yeah. words are always pretty big. Mm-hmm. Even if you're trying to choose like Christ is enough, yeah. some of that's kind of big. Like they might understand I have decided to follow Jesus, but sometimes, you know, Christ my all in all. What is that? What is, you know, they're singing it, but they don't really know. So talk about it in a way... It's really simple. Um, one of our leaders who's here with us, Ashley, who was leading, she does that super well. She just makes it really simple. They're not dumb, so you don't need to talk to them like they're five, but just explain it in a way that they relate to. And then the second thing is, even if they don't get at first what it's about, the leaders, when they're raising their hands, I see this all the time. Here's like, we'll just keep saying Johnny. Here's leader Johnny, and he's worshiping. Then the little kid next to him, I, they like go, yeah. And they watch them, and they just keep turning like this. And then the Johnny moves his hand, so they move their hand. Mm-hmm. Then Johnny does this, so they do. It. Then Johnny's praying, so they're praying. And I see it like all the time. And I think that just even starts to teach him. Oh, this is obviously something important. What we're talking about, because Johnny is reacting this way. I've got to give you a great example of that. So Kyla has been leading, you know, our fifth and sixth graders. She's led our junior hires and our high schoolers. And you know, we all have our mannerisms. And so Kyla claps like this. It's like hand down to the side, like I'm cool, and then brings it up. There was a time where Kyla was leading, my daughter was on worship team, and Ashley was on stage, and when they were clapping, it was like three minions. It was like exactly the same. You know, so that that's really true. Your kids learn from you. So I guess the question is, what are they learning? Right. Are they are they learning church is boring, music is boring, or is worship exciting? Yeah. You know? And I always say isn't it fun to worship? Right. Yeah, that's cool. Tell them right. in a question that it's fun. Aren't you excited to be here? And things like that. Not asking them seriously. Telling them it's fun. We like to do this. Yeah, that's good. And then I have leaders in the congregation who are like, yeah, back. So then like the little kids are just like smiling and they're just so happy. You know, they think it's the best thing that's ever happened to them. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Let's jump right to the last slide and then we can kind of just spend our time here. Um, we, we've touched on this. Recruiting begins young. Right, so uh, Kyla hit on this, and then let's just kind of talk through uh, what that might look like for your church. We'll try to bring it home. Uh, yeah, so honestly, identifying people really young is important, and it can it can be hard if you're not always with the kids. But at our church, we do like kids choir performances and stuff like that, and like I'm totally serious that I sit there and I take notes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, Sally in the second row can sing. Johnny over here smiles the whole time. Like I'm just looking for people who can be leaders. And who are engaging. And then I will go meet them. And I'll go meet their parents. And I'll talk to them. And I'll remember, okay, they're in the third grade. But in our church, you can start in the fifth grade. So how can I start them in the fourth grade? You know what I mean? How can I become their friend in the third grade to teach them in the fourth grade to plug them in in the fifth grade? Like I'm thinking that through the whole time. Um, And then just to be in the know, like um, I tell people all the time, like our youth, I say, you have friends who want to be involved. I say, you just tell them to come talk to me and, and I'll have opportunity for them. You just tell them. So it makes me always in the know because then they're always bringing friends. And little kids are the same way, especially little kids, because they just think everything is fun and it's more fun with their friend. Mm-hmm. Um, so recruiting friends is, like, actually super smart. They recruit groups of friends because they want to do it together. Um, and kids can lead kids. In our church, like, I don't have to lead the kids. Um, but the middle schoolers can lead the first through fifth graders, you know, it gives them opportunity to think what they'll be like as worship leaders and leaders in your church and spiritual leaders by the time they are my age, by the time that they're 20 something, but they've been leading since they were 12. My goodness. You know what I mean? That is going to (laughs) be, that's going to be fire. That's all I can think. That's going to be awesome. And they're going to be on fire for God and have been in that. Another thing that we do and, 
actually almost everybody with us this weekend is an example of this as well. Um, they came into our church wanting opportunity and wanting to learn and wanting to grow. And so what I do is I throw them in the kids' services as worship leaders first. And at first they look at me like offended. I'm serious. They look at me like you're demoting me. This is embarrassing. And I tell them, I said, no, you don't understand. I'm putting you in kids' service because I think you're going to be a great leader. And I tell them that because if you can lead the kids who are running around, who are rolling on their chair, picking their nose, they don't know what's going on. They've never led. Maybe your church has never done a ton of kids' worship, so now they're the first ones. And the kid don't know. Don't know. Apparently I didn't go to school. <laughs> doesn't know. Um, if you can lead that. Keep them engaged. Teach them what it means to worship God and who God is that we're worshiping. Then you could lead anywhere. Right. And uh, so to me, that's actually the biggest honor to lead our kids. And as I've been up in fifth or eighth grade service, I uh, it reminded me how fun it is to worship God. You know, how exciting it is to see mm -hmm. kids get it for the first time. And I think if you tell your older kids or your people looking for opportunity, no matter their age, th th what that's going to be like. Um, there's no greater joy than watching the students get it, than watching them understand what worship is for the first time, and then watching them want to be a part of it, and they lead. Um, this morning, I was getting to sing harmonies with my student, who was leading here, and that is way cooler to me than ever leading worship, and so I just think, when I try to you know, recruit people to lead our younger students, that's the way I talk about it. Um, what a, a blessing it actually will be to you and what a great growth you'll see in your own life. And then I usually get a much better response. And then when they've come out, they see that and they see that it's proven to them. And so then they tell the next ones, hey, no, she's like, they're not crazy. You should go in here and do this because it's really fun and you learn a lot. And it's a rewarding um, experience to really get to be with the kids. And, you know, we talked about the VBS and Hillsong music. You just need one leader. Just find one. Find one kid who's excited. Find one college kid who is looking for opportunity in your church. They have DVDs, slap it up on the screen. They just need to dance around and sing. And everybody thinks it's great. And then once the students get excited about that and Johnny learns guitar, great. Then he joins them. You don't need to wait till you have a full band to engage them. The DVD's doing the work anyway. Mm -hmm. So just start throwing them up there and telling them how great they are. Little kids need cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. Your whole job and my job working with our coaches um, from kids to adults is to be their biggest fan, really. Um, I just get to sit on the front row and tell them that they're awesome and tell them that they're going to do great and, uh, and then help them if they need, like, have a question or something. But really just to be there and um, give them that opportunity. Um, so set the standard early uh, with qualified and capable people. So when you choose somebody, you know, like I said, you just need one, but choose well. Choose wisely. This is your kids that you're talking about. So um, choose somebody who loves the Lord and loves your kids and wants to be a part of what's happening and can teach them to become leaders like that also. It's awesome. I think uh, kind of going back to the, the slide here where we talked about music, sound, visual arts, lights, atmospheric, staging systems. With kids, not all of your kids are going to be mu musicians, yeah. mm -hmm. but a lot of kids love video games. Yep. A lot of kids love a lot of different things. So you're not just identifying musicians. You're identifying, man, media is a huge thing in the church right now, and students are not using, they don't want to be in the church running media. They want to go start their own job doing media because the church doesn't pay all that well and you can make a lot of good money outside the church but you if you can identify the geeks in your church the ones that love technology and get them using those gifts in the church and again it's all about creating a culture of worship and worship includes those arts right, right? so let's encourage those gifts and let's because parents don't always encourage playing video games but if we can encourage them to use those gifts kids are they can learn YouTube on YouTube, how to run PowerPoint. They can create loops for music. They are way skilled. And if you need them to do something, start them in the third grade, the fourth grade, the fifth grade. Well, I would grade. say if you find yourself like me, I'm not super, super techie, so you don't, I'm not going to be teaching our graphics person anytime soon how to create something, but YouTube can. Yeah. So if you're in a church and you don't have people who can coach those things, because coaches really goes beyond instruments. You can have sound coaches, light coaches, all these things. But if you don't have that, YouTube is your light coach. YouTube is your graphics coach. And then that kid that's watching the videos, they'll be your coach. Mm -hmm. They'll grow into that, and all you needed to do was pick a YouTube link. It's really easy. Yeah. 
Yep. So it's 1222. That clock's wrong. I knew my watch wasn't that off. It's 1022 right now. No, it's 1222. Before we end, are there any questions? Hopefully we brought something that's of value. Thanks for investing in your kids. Um, it's a really honor. It's an honor for us to be here and because I know you guys don't get a chance to be just kind of refreshed all that often because you're you are on the front lines leading children. So that's really admirable. Okay, I guess it's lunchtime. Thanks, everybody.